Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show, where we get to the heart of why you overeat and how to stop. If you struggle with food and weight like I did, welcome home. Welcome, everybody, to the Heal Your Hunger Show. So happy to have you here. It is a great day to be alive. It's a beautiful day of summer, and I'm just so, so happy that I get to be alive. (laughs) So I really mean it when I say it's a great day to be alive. Um, If you're here at the Heal Your Hunger Show for the first time, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. I'm so grateful that you found us because this is a really beautiful place uh, for those who just feel lost in a whole muck and mire of weight loss noise like weight loss noise and heal your hunger is all about weight loss from the inside out. And that's what we talk about here at the heal your hunger show. So, um, and today is uh, a special show because I'm talking about my personal experience uh, recently with my family and the lessons I learned and, and just the, the observations I have. And these are all coming from straight off, uh, hot off the press and from an emotional eater herself. So that's me. I was 50 pounds overweight and I struggled miserably with my weight for so many years and felt so um, exasperated by you know, dieting and failing at diets and trying to exercise and really sucking at that, (laughs) you know, because I hated exercise because I was fat, you know, and so um, this is where we really go deeper into why we're drawn to food, why food is our, feels like our best friend, you know, and what's going on there. So I'm really glad that you're here with us. Please um, make sure to review the show. Um, We love five-star reviews and we love it when you share the show also. So others can, so others can realize that there is a non-diet approach to weight loss. So thank you for that. And also I am recording this live in the secret sauce group. So the secret sauce to end emotional eating eating now is a Facebook group specifically for those who love the heal your hunger show, love the heal your hunger message and want to hang out with other people who do as well. And also just have a conversation about the, the real stuff, the real issues around our food and weight struggles. Um, you know, so often we feel like we're the only ones who have done crazy, strange, very dangerous things with our bodies and with food and trying to get rid of the effects of the food that we eat, um, and stuffing ourselves with food. And it's just nice to hang out with people who get it right. So that's what we do, um, in the secret sauce group. So go to Facebook. If you're not in there, uh, type in the secret sauce to end the emotional eating now request to join. And then you can see these shows, um, when I record them live. Okay. Thanks so much. So on with the show. So, yeah, so I just want to talk a little bit about uh, my experience uh, that basically I just came off of a vacation with my family. So it wasn't long. It was five days and uh, or maybe six days. But I went to Colorado, which is where my mother and stepdad live. And my sisters joined us from Maine. Well, they started it. They were the ones who decided to come. One sister decided she was coming for her birthday. And then my other sister says, well, I want to come. And she came out and spent some time with my mom ahead of time. And then I came out right after the quit sugar challenge um, to spend time with my sisters and my mom and stepdad. So it was great. We all got to be together. It was the first time we'd ever gotten together in Colorado at the same time. Um, Each of us has visited my mom, uh, but this the first time all three of us were there and it was really sweet. And my, my sister, one of my sister's wife also came as well. So, um, she was, she's like our fourth sister. (laughs) So, um, yeah, so it was a beautiful time. And I just, you know, there are a lot of things that I felt were worth talking about here and that might help you and inspire you because it really was an incredible trip and some really subtle, but beautiful things happened. And so I thought, Hey, you know, I always share about my personal life here. Why not share this? So I'm just going to roll out some of those things here. And again, just whatever you can glean from this. Um, I hope it's helpful. So here we go. (laughs) So, um, first things first nature. It's so awesome to be in nature. You know, I live in Los Angeles and I see trees out my window. Look at them now. I see actually the beautiful mountains um, 
they're hills. <laughs> if you compare them to Colorado, they're hills. Um, but they're, the Santa Monica Mountains are beautiful. Um, but it's still a city. Okay, I live in the city. Let's be clear. And there's a lot of concrete. There's a lot of concrete, and um, it's there is not a lot of nature. Um, and so going to Colorado, where it's green and lush and so beautiful. Uh, it's, it's just incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And I felt so happy to be there. And I do need a good dose of nature now and then just to feed my soul in a different kind of way. And studies have shown that there's a direct link, you know, between spending time in nature and reducing stress, anxiety, and depression. So if you're in the city and you don't get a lot of nature, make sure you get out and get a good dose of nature, walk among the trees, listening to the, the rest, you know, to little uh, brooks and, and waterfalls and rustling trees and, and birds. Uh, make sure you get that. You know, there's a, a growing industry called ecotherapy, and that's all about using nature to reduce stress, using nature to improve mental and physical health. So it's a real thing, you know, and there's a report. Uh, scientific reports um, says that if you can't make it outside, okay, if, you, if this is a hard thing for you, if you can't go to nature, um, even listening to nature sounds can have a similar effect. So, you know, get a recording of birds singing or, uh, you know, water falling or leaves rustling, <laughs> you know, there's lots of different things you can just Google and get sounds of nature. And that in and of itself will help as well. So the nature impact of my trip was amazing. And every day, you know, I was walking in nature, you know, a few days, we actually went for hikes, uh, three different days, we went on hikes. And that was so incredible, so absolutely incredible and beautiful and um, enriching. And I'm so, so grateful for that. And also when you go on hikes with people you love, you know, you just sort of, you have time to have conversations and, you know, there's pauses where there's quiet and you're just looking at where you're going to put your foot next if you're on a rocky path and, um, you know, and then stopping to look at the scenery. And of course, in Colorado, the scenery is amazing mountains and, and such, but, um, it's really nice to do nature walks with people you love because there's time, there's time in their space to just talk, muse, you know, uh, inquire and just learn about people. It's just, I think the combination of the nature, you know, and the stimulation of nature and just spaciousness of time. I think that's what really makes it special when you're walking with somebody you love. Um, another thing I want to talk about uh, for my trip is how absolutely bold away uh, and, and really awe-inspired I was by how easy it was to be with my family. Now, this did not used to, this, this was not always the case. Okay. So, you know, my family was my, <laughs> you know, my family has been my teacher. Okay. I believe I chose my family, my parents, you know, my siblings, I think, uh, my soul chose this family because they were just the right life lessons that I got to learn from being a part of that family. It was not easy for any of us growing up. My sisters and I all have eating issues, okay? Um, we've all had our own uh, form of disordered eating, and we've all sought healing in different ways and have come so, each of us have come so far, you know, but that, those food issues and other issues as well, substance wise, you know, uh, process addiction wise, other issues were all spawned out of kind of this cauldron of pain we all had. And part of that pain came for each of us from sexual abuse. So we all experienced sexual abuse in various forms from various people. Um, and so we were hurting, like we were hurting and food was definitely a go-to as it is so often for people who suffer sex, sexual abuse. Um, but my parents were in pain too. You know, they had their own pain from their childhood. You know, my mother grew up with alcoholism around her. My father's dad died when he was young. So he became very responsible and, and super, 
you know, just hyper vigilant. Uh, so, but he buried that pain, you know, from his father's death. So we all had pain as people do, you know, it's hard to avoid <laughs> when you're, when you're alive. Um, but anyway, the point is we had this buried pain that was not addressed and it came out all over the place and sideways and it came out in sarcasm. And, you know, my dad was very sarcastic and, um, you know, uh, he, wasn't always nice. Uh, I came out sort of, he was sort of caustic. He didn't know how to deal with his stuff. So it came out in a caustic way. Uh, my oldest sister got the brunt of that. I lucked out because by the time I was born, I'm the youngest. Um, he was softer and he and I had a really sweet connection. So I didn't get what my sisters got so often from him. So anyway, this is, this is the setting in which I grew up. And because of that, I had these hooks. If you've ever read my book, heal your hunger, seven simple steps to, to end emotional eating. Now you see, you see, I have cartoons about hooks, you know? And so we have like inside of us, imagine we have these little hooks, um, you know, and when we have those hooks, you know, other people can come along and grab them. They can grab those hooks. And then all of a sudden, we're in this, you know, kind of yucky space of feeling triggered and feeling aggravated and whatever way we may act out on account of getting hooked. So uh, for years, I was hooked. I was hooked on account of hanging out with my family. It was very hard on my recovery path to even be with my family. So I would limit my trips to be with my family to like three days. Like, like I mean, for a while, I just didn't even want to be with my family. But as I grew in my recovery path, I would be with my family, but I'd limit it because I got hooked so easily. And, you know, my oldest sister just bugged the crap out of me. And um, my mother, I would get frustrated with, you know, it was just all that stuff, all my childhood stuff. But I'm here to report that my hooks have been dissolved. Like I, like I'm rarely hooked by being with my family, just rarely rattled. Okay. Rattled, hooked, disturbed. Um, and this trip was, was no exception. And it was just so beautiful to experience so much peace and ease around my family. And they're still them. I mean, they still have the things that used to hook me, not as much. We've all, I think we've all been our, our own paths of evolving. It's really beautiful. And, and that happens when you have somebody in the family who's stepping out of the, the fi family dynamic and dance, you know, when you have somebody who steps out of that, it changes the dance for everybody. And my oldest sister is the first one. She's, she really led the way. And I'm so grateful to her for this. So she was the first one to say, I need help. And she started getting help. This is back in the eighties. And on account of her getting help, which we all kind of, you know, ostracized her for her weirdness and her, you know, uh, going to therapy and all this kind of, my dad used to call her screwy. It was not nice to her. Um, but she said, Hey, I, I'm suffering and I need help. And, and on account of that and getting help for her food addiction and other addictions, you know, it changed the family dance. And then each of us, my sister, my other sister and I kind of followed suit and seeking a solution for our pains, you know, the things that were bothering us and, and hurting us. And, and so, um, you know, the beautiful thing is we have all evolved and yet we're still us, right? We still have our quirkiness. We still have things that are annoying, you know, and, and it, they're still there for sure. I just didn't get hooked by them. And I just want to say that is a miracle. That is a wholesale miracle. And I'm so grateful to God for healing my healing and dissolving my hooks so that I could just be with these people and accept. And I think acceptance is a lot of where that, that peace comes from. You know, I no longer try to change my family. I no longer wish they were different. I just don't. And so much of my peace comes from just accepting they are who they are. And boy, oh boy, that is a lesson in, you know, in just getting along with people is accepting them for who they are, you know, forgiving the things that are uh, not always easy to deal with um, and just loving people just warts and all, you know, that's what we want, right? We want that unconditional love, um, but it's so important that we give that. So I just feel like I'm in a good place with my family. I love them for who they are. You know, I actually just kind of 
chuckle to myself at their quirkiness and the things about them that are a little off or a little weird or a little annoying, you know, if I can stay in that loving place of just, "Mm, that's, that's them, you know, uh, I'm at peace, you know, I'm at peace. And that's really, it's not like I'm so magnanimous, you know, I'm just, it makes me more peaceful when I can accept and love people the way they are. So I'm so grateful for that. And it enabled me to have such a beautiful time with my family. Um, When I was there, my mother, uh, you know, she told us about her best friend, um, my aunt Mimi, uh, who is not my biological aunt. Um, but she's my mom's best friend and she too lives in Colorado, lived in Colorado and she was struggling. Her health was struggling and she ended up dying while we were there. And my mom got the news and she was really, you know, shaken up by it. And we just all got to be there for her. And that was a beautiful experience too, you know, to be there for my mom. I mean, she didn't fall apart. She's very pragmatic and um, uh, she says she has a really good outlook on life. Frankly, I, I admire my mom a lot, um, but it was just nice to be able to support her and be there for her. So that was a beautiful experience as well, you know, and I have, you know, one of the things I observed from my time with my family is that we each, my sisters and I each have our individual relationship with our mom. And as a kid, you know, there seemed to be a, a, a shortage of love to go around. You know, my parents had their pain, their distractions, their ways of not being present with us. And it, I think it gave my sisters and me a sense that there wasn't enough. So there's always this kind of fight for mom and dad's attention, fight for their approval, fight for their love. And that made us kind of become fighters, you know, fighters and kind of edging each other out, you know, elbowing the other one a little bit, uh, mine, I'm going to get mine. And so this created some yucky stuff, you know, yucky things between us, my sisters and me and competitiveness, jealousy, envy. Uh, and it, you know, it's, it's, you know, seeing the dynamics and from the work I've done to, to really look at those dynamics, it makes sense. It makes sense. I felt that way. It makes sense. Each of us felt that way because there were some funky dynamics, um, around mom and dad and, uh, what we were trying to get and, and what was available. The good news is that on this trip and, and just for years, I've kind of been getting to this point, but today is better than ever. You know, I am healthier than ever. It was so nice to be able to be there and appreciate that each of us has our own relationship with my mother. My father passed about literally 20 years ago this month and of cancer and my mother happened to remarry. And, um, and, and so my relationship with my mom is one where I just, I know that I have an individual relationship with my mother that can't be affected by her relationship with my sisters. So there's no more competitive this competitiveness. And anytime I had sort of an instinct of like, oh no, she's getting that attention or she's getting this something or other gift or whatever, I would start to have that instinct of, you know, am I going to miss out here? And then I just think to myself, no, like, no, you have your own relationship with mom. Like you have your own relationship with mom. It's beautiful you know, and, and my sisters have their relationship with mom and they're, they're each very different. You know, we interact in different ways with our mother. We get different, like varying amounts of time with our mom or need very amounts of time. Um, but, but they are not, no, no relationship is the same with mom and, and there's no lack. Like I just felt very secure in myself and in my relationship with my mother and didn't, like I didn't need to be threatened or feel threatened. Like there wasn't enough or somebody was getting some, some of mine, none of that. I mean, that's old stuff. And that's like, those are yucky feelings, right? Those baby feelings or, you know, my clients know that I call them baby feelings and they they feel terrible. And we often overeat over baby feelings, you know, those feelings of competitiveness and jealousy. Oh my God, those are horrible things to feel. And then we feel guilty for having them. And then we punish ourselves with food. And we try to stifle those feelings or pretend we don't have them by overeating. So I was so grateful to just be reminded that, hey, I, you know, I can just relax 
and let my sisters have what they need with my mom. And it doesn't affect me and my relationship with my mother one bit. And oh, it's such a beautiful freedom. <laughs> so uh, one of the ways that I have a, you know, a special relationship with my mom is that my mom and I have always shopped together. So we both love clothes um, and we love shopping. And uh, my sisters, they're not so into that um, as, as much. I mean, I'm just kind of a fashion bug and, and love color and, and love clothes. You know, I have a lot of clothes. <laughs> so, um, and so does my mother. So she said to me, she's like, Oh my God, I don't know what I'm going to wear to Mimi's funeral, you know? And she's like, I, I don't know. And my mother's getting older. And that was kind of a thing when we were there is just recognizing that, that our mother is older. She's, um, in her mid eighties and, um, we actually, my sisters and I just had a little talk about that. Um, but anyway, my mother was saying, I don't know what to wear. Cause I'm not usually here in August, you know, sh- um, and, or maybe it wasn't that she was, it wasn't there, but she is going to this funeral and she was in this quandary and it, which she's got plenty of things to wear and it's not a big deal, but to her, she was sort of feeling overwhelmed by this. She gets more overwhelmed. She gets overwhelmed more easily lately, I think with her age. So I said, mom, I'll help you. And so, and I promise you, if I hadn't been, if I weren't an emotional eating expert, I'd be a personal shopper or like stylist. Like I love that kind of thing. So I'm like, mom, I'll help you. So we go into her closet and I'm pulling things out and saying, what about this? What about this? And we put together an outfit so that she's prepared in a couple of weeks to go to this funeral. And it brought me so much joy to give to my mom in that way. It's such a simple thing, but it brought her some peace, you know, and another way I was able to help is she has hair issues. <laughs> she has hair issues. Um, and so I, for, for several years has helped her have helped her with her hair. I found somebody in Los Angeles that can help her with her hair too. It kind of, um, to really help her who knows what they're doing. And so, um, I was able to help her when I was out there and I actually trimmed part of her hair um, just because there were some funky things happening. And that felt so good too. And she so appreciates it. And she appreciates that I can be there for her in that way. These may sound like silly little things, but for me, they're not. Like it, it feels really good to be able to give to my mom. She's given me a lot. She's loved me. She births me. And um, it just, I love giving back to her. And this is how I stay in a place of peace around my relationships with my family is to focus on giving. Like, what can I give to them instead of what can I get from them? And this is, these are a few ways that I can give to my mom and just feels so, so beautiful. And she's so appreciative. It's just sweet. It's a sweet connection. It's my unique relationship with her, as I mentioned. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is my, my relationship with my sister, my oldest sister. And we've had contention, you know, uh, in the past, especially growing up, it was not an easy relationship. And she was not a nice big sister. <laughs> she was not a nice big sister. She was suffering from food addiction. She was a monster. She, you know, her, she had a personality of a rattlesnake. <laughs> and, and so I hated her for a long time. She also just wasn't good with personal boundaries, you know, and, and just was in my, you know, in my stuff. And so, and she's come so far. I'm very grateful but she's, you know, got her, you know, her ways of uh, getting on my nerves, but I just had such a beautiful time with her. And again, it just came from accepting her the way she is and loving her the way she is. And, and she is very loving towards me. And I appreciate, you know, her as a big sister. Now she's, she's changed, you know, 180 degrees, you know, uh, turnaround, basically, she's really amazing. So that was such a beautiful thing. But I did used to hate her, and I no longer hate her. And I'm just so, so grateful for that transformation. But that came from that deep work that I had to do inside myself you know, heal your hunger is all about weight loss from the inside out. And I guide my clients on a journey of healing from the inside out, because that's how you have lasting weight loss. And that's really what I'm talking about here is, you know, healing those hooks, you know, dissolving those hooks, no longer getting triggered by people in our families and people we love. And it's such freedom. And it, it, helps us be free from food cravings and it helps us be free from the need to overeat at all. So I'm very grateful for that. And my relationship with my sister 
is evidence of that as well. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about is my relationship with my body. And this is something that has evolved over time. I used to feel so much shame about my body, no matter what my weight. And I think this comes from having, you know, sexual abuse in the past too. I had this shroud of shame about my body and there was no way anybody was going to see me naked. Okay. Like I just was uh, so ashamed of my boobs. You know, I always had little boobs and strange, not normal boobs, (laughs) you know? So that was, yeah, I felt shame about that. I felt shame about the roll on my tummy. Um, you know, and again, it didn't really matter. Even if I was at a lower weight, I had this shame by the grace of God, you know, that's left me many, many moons ago. Um, did that leave me? And I'm so grateful for that. And I had the opportunity when we were hiking one day, we were by these waterfalls that were so incredible. And, and so my, my uh, sister and her uh, wife, my sister-in-law, we all went, decided to go swimming and it was really cold water. This is runoff from the mountains, right? So super cold Colorado, you know, mountain water, ice cold water. Um, and so what was fun for me as, even though my mom and my stepdad were there, I'm like, I'm not going, like I had a um, little hiking dress on a little dress that I could hike in, you know, it's just synthetic stretchy material, um, that I was, uh, going for this hike in, but I didn't want to be wet. So I'm like, I'm taking this off. So I took my dress off. I took my underwear off, you know, and, and I went skinny dipping (laughs) and there were people around like they, at the moment there weren't around the rocky area that we were in, but they were close by, but I didn't care. And I jumped in that water and it was really cold and fun. And, um, and my, my stepdad from afar took pictures of us. It was really funny. I don't, you know, it, it, there was so far away you couldn't really see, but it was really a fun thing to capture us swimming in this ice cold water. And I wasn't, I didn't feel like I didn't, he didn't care. I didn't care, you know? And so it was, it was just the idea that I feel as free as I do in my body now. Um, I'm so grateful for that. It's such a miracle such a miracle. And of course I appreciate the weight loss that I've had, you know, um, you know, 50, roughly 50 pounds. And I do love my body now. And I, you know, thank God I, I have lost weight, but it's really, you know, I had so much shame about my body at all different sizes that just to feel the freedom of, you know, and the healing around, my relationship with my body is so beautiful and wonderful and my, and healing around my relationship with my boobs and my relationship with my tummy, you know, just, I just love my body now. And I treat my body with respect, you know, the love I have for my body really comes, you know, people will say, Oh, you have to love yourself, but that's an action. Self-love is an action. So self-love comes from eating the right food. Self come self-love comes from putting time and effort into making a meal, making a salad, you know, cutting vegetables, having prep time, you know, thinking ahead about what you're going to eat, making sure you have food in the refrigerator. That's all part of self-love. That's all part of loving our bodies, you know, so self-love is an action. And I really feel like all the actions I've taken over the years, the actions that I teach my clients to take, you know, meditation, prayer, writing, walking, um, being in community with each other, showing up on calls, supporting each other, loving on each other. You know, these are all ways that I've come to a place of uh, real healing with myself, um, body, mind, and spirit. So these are some of the things I learned and, and observed about my time with my family Um, you know, it's just healing from emotional eating goes so much deeper than just eating the right foods. You know, it goes so much deeper. It really is about this journey of learning to love yourself and advocate for yourself, you know, and learning how to love others as well. You know, I didn't have a lot of capacity to love others when I was hating myself. Other people were getting the spillover of what I was doing to myself. So um, this is something you can have as well. I hope the things I've shared have maybe struck a chord um, and uh, have maybe um, struck a chord and inspired you, you know, but this is, this is the heal your hunger journey and I'm on it. Uh, I don't think I'll ever not be on it. Um, and I, I 
I love sharing it with other people. So thanks so much for listening. I hope you share this, um, you know, as this, this will be up on as a podcast. I hope you share this, um, you know, and invite others to be part of this heal your hunger journey of weight loss from the inside out, which has so many benefits. There are too many to count, but I love you so much. And I'm really happy to be here with you. Have a great rest of your day and weekend, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to get free support, insider health info, exclusive invites to events, and more, visit HealYourHunger.com.